الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله العظيم Honorable viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, to all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth, and also to our YouTube and Facebook viewers, I greet you all with the universal greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Welcome once again to Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. I hope and pray, believe in brothers and sisters, that you are joining me this wonderful Monday evening in the best of health and faith by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As usual, we will commence our program with our opening Quranic recitation so as to gain the mercy, uh, rahmah, barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything good that we do, believe in brothers and sisters, we always try to gain the mercy, gain the rahmah, barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the best way to achieve this is to turn our attention to the best form of dhikr and that is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. So we'll commence our program with our opening Qur'anic recitation this evening. Remember, whenever the Qur'an is recited, let us listen to it attentively, let us be quiet so that we will be part and parcel of the blessings insha'Allah ta'ala. Let us go straight to our opening Qur'anic recitation. قل أرأيتم شركاءكم الذين تدعون من دون الله أروني ماذا خلقوا من الأرض أروني ماذا خلقوا من الأرض أم لهم شرك في السماوات أم آتيناهم كتابا فهم على بينة منه بل إن يعد الظالمون بعضهم بعضا إلا غرورا إن الله يمسك السماوات والأرض أن تزولا ولئن زالتا إن أمسكهما من أحد من بعده إن كان حليما غفورا وأقسموا بالله جهد أيمانهم لئن جاءهم نذير ليكونن أهدى من إحدى الأمم فلما جاءهم نذير ما زادهم إلا نفور استكبارا في الأرض ومكر السيء ولا يحيق المكر السيء إلا بأهله فهل ينظرون إلا سنة الأولين فلن تجد لسنة الله تبديلا ولن تجد ولن تجد لسنة الله تحويلا أولم يسيروا في الأرض فينظروا كيف كان عاقبة الذين من قبلهم وكانوا أشد منهم قوة وما كان الله ليعجزه من شيء في السماوات ولا في الأرض 
إنه كان عليما قديرا ولو يؤاخذ الله الناس بما كسبوا ما ترك على ظهرها من دابة ولكن يؤخرهم إلى أجل مسمى فإذا جاء أجلهم فإن الله كان بعباده بصيرا الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم صدق الله العظيم Surely Allah سبحانه وتعالى God Almighty has spoken the truth what a beautiful way to commence our program as usual, turning our attention to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the Qur'an. Whatever blessings would have earned from that recitation, we beg and pray that it will be showered upon each and every one of our brothers and sisters, all of, all of our brothers and sisters who may be affected with any sort of difficulty, um, hardship in life, trials in life, then we beg and pray that the blessings earned 
will be shared upon each and every one of them by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our program this evening, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of NNS Algos Customs Brokerage Service for fast, reliable, accurate customs brokerage service. Then you can visit them at 49 Public Road Kitty in Georgetown. Um, they have their branch office also located at Lot 10A Public Road, Cornelia Ida on the west coast of Damar. Make contact with them 225 509 5495 or 5010991 with 21 years in the customs brokerage service. VNB Supermarket 20 North Lenora on the west coast of Damara, Wolf Furniture Store, um, Public Road Lenora on the west coast of Damara. For more information with regards to their products and services, then make contact with them on telephone number 268 3913. Dollar Empire Incorporated and Dinar Trading. They are located at Lot 1 Lamaha and Cumming Street in Georgetown. 2317293 is the number to call. You can make contact with Brother uh, Iqbal right there on that number, inshallah. Gafsin's Industry, their head office located at Rome Magdum on the East Bank of the Amara. 226 That is the number that you can make contact with them. You can be able to get uh, your very valuable information with regards to the products and services that they offer there. Bacchus Drugstore, 24 Safan and Ho Street in Georgetown, 227-2604 or make contact with Brother Bobby on telephone number 650-2255 for all of your uh, pharmaceutical and medical supplies. Then make contact with them, inshallah. Westside Taxi Service, 38 Lagrange, Public Road on the West Bank of Demrara. You can contact Brother Azad on telephone number 500-4066 or 500-1244. RNS Ali Trucking Service, 63 Triumph Village, East Coast, Damrara. Make contact there with Mr. Ali on telephone number 625-3826 or 645-3207. And not to forget in memory of my dear and beloved parents, Nazar Muhammad and Bibi Akila Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless these brothers and sisters, bless their business, bless their earnings, put barakah and blessing in their life, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And may this initiative and this gesture of theirs be a means for them to enter into the Jannah and the parties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember to support these brothers and sisters, support their business, inshallah. And so with your support, uh, inshallah, then our brothers and sisters will be able to support programs of this nature and to do other uh, beautiful and amazing work for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us go, believing brothers and sisters, to our hadith of the day. And when we come back, we'll have more of Let's Talk Islam with Imam Muhammad. Take a look at our hadith of the day. Hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar With a mission, faith and patience You convey the noble message Brought the slide Yes, welcome back to our program That was our Hadith of the Day segment Beautiful advice, beautiful words from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember, believe in brothers and sisters, respected viewers. We always ask that you try to inculcate these reminders in your life. Try to act upon them. Our brothers and sisters, you're viewing our program this evening. Then share them with those who are absent by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You can always continue to view our program right here on Channel 6 and 9 every Monday evenings at 8.30 p.m. We have our YouTube channel. Um, I would encourage you brothers and sisters to subscribe to that YouTube channel. You can be able to view all our previous programs that are uploaded there inshallah. And so if you don't have the time to view our program on the television, maybe you're busy, perhaps you're, you have other commitments, then you can be able to view our programs on the YouTube channel whenever you have time inshallah ta'ala. Our Facebook page as well, like that page and get those various notifications, those various reminders with regards to halal and haram, with regards to um, other very valuable, uh, vital information 
about this deen of ours inshallah all of this is displayed on our facebook page and also we have our previous programs are also uploaded there inshallah and so i encourage you brothers and sisters to um, like our page on facebook not to forget uh, our whatsapp group stay connected believing brothers and sisters through our whatsapp group we use this platform to share, share valuable information also with regards to halal and haram with regards to moon sighting update with regards to various um, issues and various matters concerning this deen of ours we have also our ahadith we share various quranic verses quranic um, reminders and also very valuable words of wisdom inshallah that can able to act as some amount of momentum for each and every one of us uh, some amount of reminders uh, for each and every one of us inshallah 6226842 is the number to subscribe and be a part and parcel of that group inshallah ta'ala believe in brothers and sisters let us go straight to our reminder of the day and when we come back we'll have more on our program this evening let's talk islam with imran muhammad bringing the light of islam to each and every one of you take a look at our reminder of the day we know the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to say bismillah to mention allah's name and in fact it was common for him to say bismillah before doing anything of importance when we actually look through his sunnah we find him using bismillah not necessarily Bismillah rahman rahim but just at least the portion Bismillah in the name of Allah before doing deeds of importance. And this is the reminder for us. The literal translation of Bismillah in the name of Allah or with the name of Allah seems incomplete what do you mean in the name of Allah or with the name of Allah when you say Bismillah it is saying actually in the name of Allah I will do this act I will do it with the remembrance of Allah I'm remembering Allah while doing it and this becomes a reminder for us that whatever we are about to do it is by the permission of Allah that we are able to do it it is by the grace of Allah and his mercy that we have had the opportunity to do it and it is from his blessing if we do it successfully and we benefit from it all of it goes back to Allah so we say before doing whatever we are about to do of some importance some importance to us we say Bismillah and as we said on other occasions where we are entering into areas where there is potential misguidance saying bismillah also helps to keep us on the right path as a remembrance of Allah it helps to keep us on track so if we go to the internet also called the fitna net if we say bismillah before we turn on or as we turn on the computer or laptop whatever we say bismillah this is a reminder to help us stay on track so we don't go on the computer because we know if our intention to go on the computer is for something which is haram not pleasing to Allah then it's difficult for us to say Bismillah 
and then go open up your computer. If there is any mustard seed of Iman in our hearts, we will be very shy. It will be impossible for us to say Bismillah and go and do it. It's like saying Bismillah and taking a glass of alcohol. So if we find that we don't want to say Bismillah, we want to go ahead and do it without saying Bismillah, then this is, this is a guide for us. This is a reminder for us that whatever activity we're about to do is one we should not be doing. Alhamdulillah, welcome back to our program. That was our reminder of the day segment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. And indeed, believing brothers and sisters, it is very important that when we venture into our daily activities, our routine, then we should always utter the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the shortest dua. We should say Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, generally, everything that we do, it is by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our actions that we do and the things that we um, venture in to do in our lives, our routines, um, our activities in our lives, then these are things that happen out of the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us can do anything except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is very important that when we do this, we always utter Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like our reminder of the day, Alhamdulillah, there are uh, very valuable uh, virtues and, and tremendous blessings one can get um, when we utter the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is when we start our work, then we say Bismillah. So this will bring barakah and blessing in our time, barakah and blessing in our effort, and also our production will have this barakah and blessing in it, insha'Allah. So that was our reminder of the day, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His infinite mercy, believing brothers and sisters, has caused us to be a part and parcel of this month, the month of Jumad al-Ula. And so tomorrow evening, Tuesday uh, evening, insha'Allah, we will be looking out for the new moon, the month of Rajab. So we'll be looking out for that moon, insha'Allah ta'ala. If we sight the moon tomorrow evening, then the first day of Rajab will commence on Wednesday, insha'Allah ta'ala. And so, believing brothers and sisters, the month of Rajab, it plays a very vital, a very pivotal role in the life of every single Muslim, every single believer. It is actually the seventh month of the Islamic year um, and it is actually the starting of a spiritual season simply because it is the stepping stone or it is a prelude to the month of Ramadan. It is actually the gateway to the month of Ramadan. So the month of Rajab, like I mentioned before, it is the seventh month of the Islamic year and it is also considered to be one of the sacred and sanctified months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this point in the Quran and advising us with regards to the sacred and sanctified months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says beautifully, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahran fi kitabillah yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard minha arba'atun hurum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us indeed the number of months with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is 12. This has been recorded in the book, uh, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or this has been recorded in the Lawh al mahfuz which is the preserved tablet from the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth. Minha arba'atun hurum and out of these 12 months then four of them are considered sacred. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising us in the Qur'an. Telling us that four out of these 12 months are considered sacred and sanctified. Now the month of Ramadan, believing brothers and sisters, we all know is one of, is the, is actually the most blessed month of the year when it comes to its virtues, when it comes to its blessings, when it comes to receiving rewards, like we've, meant, like we've been told, that the actions that are done in the month of Ramadan will multiply many times and many fold. So the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, is the most blessed month of the year. Now put that aside, believing brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this very ayah that I have recited, uh, four of these months are considered sacred. 
So the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, is the most blessed month of the year. But then these four months are considered sacred and sanctified. So there is a difference, subhanAllah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised us that three of these months run in succession. Meaning three of these, three out of the four sacred and sanctified months comes one after the, one, the other. And the fourth month, it is by itself. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated to us, to us that the three months that run in succession it is the month of Muharram, the month of Dhul Qada, and the month of Dhul Hijjah. These are the three months that runs in succession and then the fourth sacred month, the month that is by itself, it is the month of Rajab. And so it holds a very pivotal and it plays a very significant role in the life of every single Muslim to the extent believing brothers and sisters that battles were prohibited in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu fighting was prohibited, oppression, uh, engaging in starting any sort of conflict and so in the pre-Islamic days there were a lot of tribal wars that used to take place in uh, you know the various months and so what usually happened is that the people used to take advantage of these um, these sacred months so for example we are in the month of Juma al Ula and so next month, inshallah, is the month of Rajab. And so when these people knew that the month of Rajab will come, then they will try to delay and they will try to uh, put off going into the month of Rajab simply because they know that it was a very sacred and sanctified month. And so they wanted to continue all of their battle and continue all of their tribal wars. So if they enter into the month of Rajab, then they know that they will have to cease all their fighting, subhanAllah. So they had... Um, they used to play around with the months, subhanAllah. And so all of the tribes, they would not recognize the, sac the sacred and the sancti sanctity of these uh, sacred months. Except for one specific tribe known as uh, the tribe of Muddar. These were people who would respect the sanctity of the month. They will, they will give the, the month its through rights, subhanAllah, so they will not violate the sanctity of the month of Rajab. And so when they entered into the sacred month, they will drop all fighting, they will drop all sorts of ammunition, all their uh, equipments, all their bows, their shields, etc. And so as a result of that, the month of Rajab has been given the name Rajab Muddar. So we know the month of Rajab as the month of Rajab Muddar, subhanAllah. The month of Rajab, believing brothers and sisters, house also two beautiful, two great incident that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so as the months go by, inshallah, we will try to speak upon these incidents, we will try to bring, um, uh, we will try to highlight these incidents, inshallah, and so um, the lessons that we can learn from them as well. One of them, very famous incident that took place in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that happened in the month of Rajab um, we all know of the Isra and the Mi'raj where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated um, he traveled uh, from he traveled to uh, and ascended to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the highest heavens Subhanallah uh, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj and also we have the battle of Tabuk that took place um, in the ninth year after the Hijra in the month of Rajab. So these are some very beautiful and significant events that took place in the life of the Prophet ﷺ in the month of Rajab, subhanAllah. But generally, what does this mean for each and every one of us as believers, as Muslims, now that we are entering into the month of Rajab, the seventh month of the Islamic year, what really does this mean, believing brothers and sisters? And so generally we know that the month of Rajab, it is a prelude to the month of Ramadan with the intervening month that is the month of Sha'ban. So we have the month of Rajab, then we have the intervening month which is the month of Sha'ban, and then we have the month of Ramadan that comes after that. We know that the month of Ramadan is a very significant month. It is one of the months that many, many Muslims we look forward to the month of Ramadan, it is the month of spirituality, it is a month of gaining barakah and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
it is the month of fasting, it is the month of Quran, it is the month of so many uh, spiritual upliftment, subhanAllah. And so the month of Ramadan now being two months away, this therefore means that we need to capitalize on these precious moments that are, that are ahead of us. We need to recalibrate our spiritual and our moral compass in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to recalibrate our spirituality. Now that we will enter into the month of Rajab, we need to start to recalibrate our spirituality, start to recalibrate our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. We need to do that through our salah, through uh, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the dhikr, towards dua, towards being charitable. Since these are beautiful and the great form of worship and ibadat that now comes simultaneously in the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. And so this is a, a very amazing time that you and I can use to start our preparation process for the month of Ramadan, believe in brothers and sisters. We do not want to let these uh, precious moments go by so fast without making some amount of preparations. And so we should try as much as possible to get connected with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if we are doing that, if we are reciting the Quran on a regular basis, alhamdulillah, then try to increase. If we are reciting perhaps half of a page a day, then increase it to maybe one page a day. If we are reciting one page a day, then go a little bit further. Recite maybe a page and a half, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala. So we are now building ourselves, we are now building our momentum, we are now putting provisions in place and putting, uh, we're making that necessary preparations so that when we enter the month of Ramadan, when we start the first of Ramadan, inshallah, then we'll have that full momentum, we'll have that uh, full enthusiasm and when we venture in to recite the Quran because the month of Ramadan, it is the month of the Quran and so when we make that commitment to recite the Quran then we'll have that good fluency insha'Allah when we start the first of Ramadan then we'll be able to recite the entire Quran in uh, throughout the month of Ramadan our Salah as well is very important that we continue to practice upon our Salah this is a very great form of worship and ibadah that, um, is, that should be present in the life of every single believer, every single Muslim throughout the life of that individual um, practicing upon our five daily salawat is very very important it is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we will want to at least involve in some extra ibadat extra salawat in the month of Ramadan and so let us not wait for the month of Ramadan the first of Ramadan to come then to put these things in place and so like I mentioned before the month of Rajab is actually the training ground or a starting point or a a way and a channel for us to start making these necessary preparations insha'Allah with regards to our salah, with regards to our dua being charitable insha'Allah um, therefore believing brothers and sisters this is an amazing time to actually start our preparations preparation process the scholars they mentioned that the month of Rajab it is the month of planting the seed so when we look at a farmer for example who plants and he goes into the fields and he plows the ground um, and he plows the art and make necessary preparations and so he put that seed in and he makes provisions to plant that seed so the month of Rajab is like planting that seed so just like how that fa farmer will plant that seed in the field then the month of Rajab it is like planting that seed the month of Sha'ban it is like watering that seed and so when the month of Sha'ban comes, believe in brothers and sisters, then that is where we will try to intensify our worship, intensify our ibadat, uh, and so on. And then the month of Ramadan, it is like reaping what we have planted. And so if we have made the necessary preparations in the month of Rajab, and we have intensified in the month of Sha'ban, just like how the farmer will water that seed, then when it comes to reaping, then we will reap beautiful blessings, we will reap beautiful crops, we live in brothers and sisters so it is actually what we put in is that what we will reap and so that is why the scholars say the month of Rajab is like uh, planting that seed the month of Sha'ban is watering it and then the month of Ramadan is 
when we will reap that blessings and barakah insha'Allah ta'ala. So believing brothers and sisters, you and I, we need to honor this month of Rajab. We need to insha'Allah give it its sanctity. It is one of the sacred and sanctified months. And so we should not wrong ourselves in this month, believing brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this uh, beautiful ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَظْلِمُونَ فِيهِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ And so do, do not wrong yourselves in these months. Meaning, involve in any sort of sin, do not um, commit any sort of oppression, any sort of wrongdoings. And so do not wrong one another, believing brothers and sisters, simply because, because of the sanctity and the sacredness of the month of Rajab, then when we sin in this sacred month, then know well that that sin will also multiply in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to do not wrong yourselves in, in this month simply because it, has, it will carry a very big burden on our skills. It will carry a very big burden on the day of judgment. And so just as how when a person does wrong in this month of Rajab or any of the sacred and sanctified months and so the sin will multiply then doing good also in the month these months the four sacred and sanctified months particularly the month of Rajab that we are in inshallah then our blessings will also multiply by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so believing brothers and sisters then uh, we should try as much as possible to keep away from wrong wronging others uh, do not oppress anyone, especially in this month, like I've mentioned before, keep our hearts clean. That is very, very important, inshallah. Keep away from lewdness, any sort of vulgarity, any sort of filth. We should try to um, control our eyes, control our tongue, the way that we speak to people, control our the things that we listen to as well. So keep away from filth generally, uh, enmity from one another, then we should try to avoid this as well holding grudges, believing brothers and sisters, then we should not go wrong. We should not go wrong with this baggage of hatred and baggage of, of enmity in our hearts, holding bad feelings for one another. And we do not want to enter the month of Ramadan with all of these negative baggages of the heart, inshallah ta'ala. And so, in closing, the month of Ram Rajab, very significant month, then let us utilize these precious moments, inshallah to build our spirituality from now, to recalibrate our moral compass, recalibrate our spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from now insha'Allah. So let us try to set that seed or plant that seed like the scholars they mentioned uh, and in the month of Sha'ban we water that seed and so come the month of Ramadan then we'll have a very high spiritual connection. It will be off the charts, it will be at its highest insha'Allah and we'll be able to worship on a very uh, positive level, we are able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a deeper level, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, especially in this month of Rajab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he entered the month of Rajab, he will recite a very beautiful dua. And so I close my little advice, insha'Allah, with this dua, advising each and every one of you to let us learn it, and let us try to practice upon it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us in the month of Rajab, bless us in the month of Sha'ban, and expand our life, prolong our life, so that we can be able to see the month of Ramadan. It's a very, very beautiful dua, believing brothers and sisters. Let us try to act upon it. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Let us go to our quotation of the day, and when we come back, we will bring our program to a close. Guidance, peace be upon you, my beloved. Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad, Ya Nabi, Salam alayka, Ya Rasul, Salam alayka, Ya Habib, Salam alayka, Salawatullah alayka, Ya Nabi, Salam alayka. Welcome back, believing brothers and sisters, to our program. That was our quotation of the day, Alhamdulillah. 
it is now time that we bring our curtains down on our program. I wish to thank each and every one of you for viewing our program this evening. I wish to thank all my sponsors for supporting us throughout uh, the years that we have uh, started our program. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these brothers and sisters, bless their business, bless their earnings. And may this be a means for them to enter into the Jannah and the parties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel our page on Facebook as well and stay connected through our WhatsApp group 6226842 is the number to subscribe and be a part of that group inshallah ta'ala so until next week Monday may the peace guidance mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you I leave you with our Islamic greetings of peace and love Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Gaffords, manufacturers of the perfect concrete hollow block in sizes 4 inches and 6 inches, certified by the Ghana National Bureau of Standards and hydraulically tested by the University of Ghana to 2,000 pounds per square inch. Pallet packed and shrink wrapped for easy transportation too. So get your supplies of the best quality made concrete hollow blocks in Guyana and also get a 12.5% discount. For superior service, quality and competitive prices, visit Gaffu's Mega Complex at Matdu and our outlets at Rose Hall, Kanji, Benefow Acting, Memes, Land of Canaan and Parika. Shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergents and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range, and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery, and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make home so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection, perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Kids need to be healthy, and taking care of them can be difficult. That's why at Bacchus Drugstore we stock the widest range in children's vitamins, tonics, formulas for colds, coughs and fevers and other healthcare products at the lowest prices. Remember, your kids are your future. Take care of them. Bacchus Drugstore, where good health counts. Lerde hasretin var, yürekler aşkınla çarpar. Sensiz dünya bizlere dar. Selam sana, ey kutlu yar. With a mission, faith and patience, you conveyed the noble message. Brought us light through your guidance. Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya 
محمد يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول